Erling Haaland, one of, if not the biggest name in world football right now. And as rumours are growing about where his next move could be, I'm taking a look at which clubs I think realistically could buy the player. Of course, there are clubs like Barcelona, Bayern Munich, PSG that are some of the biggest clubs in the world and I'm sure they would not turn Haaland away. However, due to a mixture of financial difficulties and the fact that they've already got that area of the pitch covered, I can't see them making a move for the player. Since his arrival on the scene with Red Bull Salzburg to his move to Borussia Dortmund in January 2020, he has lit up every single stage that he has graced and he's been on absolute fire. Last season for Dortmund, he managed 44 goals in 40 appearances and at the point of filming this season so far he's already managed 27 goals in 25 appearances and at 20 years of age the sky is the absolute limit for the player. Erling Haaland is the complete centre forward. Standing at over 6 foot 3 tall, the Norwegian is physically imposing. He is of course capable of getting on the end of crosses and long balls forward, but he's also frighteningly fast with the ball at his feet. Pair this with being a natural finisher in front of goal and you've got an absolute superstar on your hands. Now, of course his contract does not expire until 2024, but Dortmund could be tempted to sell the player if a club does come forward willing to pay more than his release clause, which is about 75 million euros, which doesn't come into effect until 2022. He is undoubtedly one of the most sought after young talents in world football, so it's no surprise really that so many European clubs are after his signature. The first club that I could realistically see Haaland moving to is Manchester City. Now, believe it or not, it's been four years since the club have signed a striker, and maybe Haaland could be the player to end this drought. At the end of the day, by the time the summer comes around, City will be in desperate need of a striker. Let's take a look at who they've got at the moment. First up, Sergio Aguero. His contract is, of course, expiring in the summer, and he will be a free agent. He he has been a key figure for the club, one of the best in their history, but injuries has meant that he's barely played this season and Pep Guardiola does need a more reliable front man. Then there's Gabriel Jesus, a little bit too inconsistent you could argue, City should not rely on him as their lone striker to provide the team with a large number of goals. Jesus' finishing has been one of the issues apparently, but since his arrival at the club his goals have increased as each season has gone by. Last season he actually finished on 23 goals, but so far this season he's only actually got 8. But no matter what his numbers are, again, they still need to replace the number of goals that Aguero does provide. In addition to this, I think Haaland would really suit Manchester City because he'd slot in really well to their recent tactical changes. So if you look at some of their Premier League games of late, Pep Guardiola has opted for at least one wide man on the flank of his stronger foot. And what this has meant is that Manchester City have been a lot more attacking. Go back to the Centurion season, that kind of attacking power. In particular, we have seen Phil Foden down the left and Raheem Sterling down the right making real direct runs down the wing then cutting the ball back into the box, supported by the likes of João Cancelo. This type of service, along with the support of the likes of Ilkay Gundogan and Kevin De Bruyne, etc., is something that Haaland would really, really thrive in, especially with his excellent movement in the box. I think that Haaland is intelligent enough, ruthless enough, strong enough to fit into Manchester City's system. Now, I know that there are a few people that may have a few concerns when it comes to City signing Haaland. Guardiola doesn't have the best track record when it comes to signing number nines. They may not really want to have to deal with the likes of Mino Raiola. Also, there have been some people criticising City that they're not maybe a super club because they haven't won the Champions League yet. But at the end of the day, Haaland would be going to a club that is arguably one of the best in Europe. At the moment, the best in the Premier League and are still in contention for the Champions League at the moment. And of course, they've got one of the world's greatest managers in Guardiola. In addition to this, City are allegedly willing to pay above the buyout clause fee and reportedly will be willing to offer Haaland a whopping £400,000 a week in wages. On top of this, City also have one trick up their sleeves that other clubs definitely do not have. City of course sold Jadon Sancho to Dortmund and have a 15% sell-on clause on the player, with Sancho valued at around £120 million by Dortmund. The sell-on clause could be about £15 million and therefore City could maybe waiver this fee, they could maybe negotiate it if it meant that they could then sign Haaland. Of course, many people do feel that the fact that Haaland's dad played for Manchester City could be a deciding factor for the player, but I don't really see this coming into the equation. At the end of the day, this is an opportunity to play for arguably the best club in England at the moment that will be competing for the biggest trophies, so why wouldn't he want to move to Manchester City? The next club that could realistically purchase Haaland is Chelsea. Now, of course, when it comes to their centre forwards, there has been so much rotation with Timo Werner, Olivier Giroud and Tammy Abraham switching it up so often. They did it for Frank Lampard and 
And even with Thomas Tuchel now at the helm at Stamford Bridge, he is also rotating his players a lot. Looking at what Chelsea already have, of course there is Giroud, an impressive scoring record this season so far for the player with 11 goals in 22 games. He links up really well with his teammates, but his lack of speed and athleticism can impact Chelsea's overall structure as a team. Then you've got Tammy Abraham, a good record in front of goal for him as well with 12 goals in the bag already for this season. He has the athleticism that Giroud lacks, but concerns do remain over his ability to link play with his teammates in the same way that Giroud does. So when you think of a player like Haaland, he could potentially solve this problem. He will provide you with the athleticism that Giroud can't provide you with, and he could also provide you with what Tammy Abraham is lacking, of course, being able to link up the play. And on top of this, he would score a phenomenal amount of goals and could be the solution to the problem of Tuchel having to constantly rotate. And in addition, let's not forget, Chelsea are lacking the real Timo Werner. Who knows where he is? It is something that Haaland could fix. Werner's successor RB Leipzig came as a two-man striking system, and signing Haaland could also provide the struggling forward with the optimum conditions to succeed at Stamford Bridge. Last season, at his former club, Werner worked really well with the likes of Yusuf Paulson and Patrick Schick. And to be fair, you could argue that Haaland does have some similar qualities to these two players. So surely Chelsea are not going to give up the opportunity to bring in a player that could help them solve this Werner situation. And when it comes to money, let's face it, Chelsea are one of the few clubs that could actually afford the player. Say what you want about Abravnovic and his serial sackings, but when his managers need money, he always seems to deliver. Of course, there are so many positives to moving to Chelsea. A club with the history that they've got and some of the trophies that they've won in the past, moving to London and the luxury of that, being back in the UK for Haaland, as of course he was born in the UK. But Chelsea do have to ask themselves two questions if they want to sign the player. Number one, will they be able to give him Champions League football? Now, it has been a bit rocky for Chelsea, let's be honest. Hopefully, they will finish in the top four, but if they don't, is Haaland going to want to play in the Europa League? I highly doubt this, to be honest, especially when you look at how well he has been playing for Dortmund already in the Champions League. And number two, is he going to get enough game time? People that are close to Haaland say that if he does leave Dortmund, his main priority is, of course, game time. He wants to be the star man in the team, the first name on the team sheet. He will not accept any less than that. So with all of the strikers that Chelsea do have, will they be able to guarantee him enough game time? I personally think that they'll be able to sort that out. There is no hierarchy with Chelsea at the moment, especially when you look at how much Tuchel is rotating. So there's no reason why Haaland couldn't come in and be top dog. At the end of the day, if Chelsea can offer him that number nine shirt, playing as many game minutes as he possibly can, competing for the Premier League, the Champions League, I don't see any reason why they could not sign Haaland. And finally, another club that I could realistically see signing Erling Haaland is Real Madrid. What Real Madrid need is a striker, a goal scorer. So can you blame them for wanting to be interested in Haaland? They need a player that is going to get them a good 40 goals at least each season. And although there are talks of Kylian Mbappe, putting that to the side at the moment, let's talk about Haaland. I think he could be a great signing. Looking at who they already have, Karim Benzema, of course, a loyal servant to the club for 10 years. Last season, he managed 27 goals. Currently, this season at the point of filming, he already has 17, but he's 33, an aging player, and he cannot be solely responsible. Then you've got Eden Hazard, over 100 goals for Chelsea, amazing player. It hasn't quite worked out at Real Madrid. He's consistently injured and unreliable. Then you've got Luka Jovic, another player that it seemingly hasn't worked out for yet. Perhaps he could reignite his form on his current loan, but still too inconsistent. The rest of the players that Real Madrid have that do score some goals, yeah, they're okay, but they're not going to provide Real Madrid with the number of goals that they need. And on top of this, I think Haaland has so many qualities that Real Madrid would really, really benefit from. He is, of course, a predator in front of goal, but he's also so committed. He's the type of player that you can imagine defending corners, backtracking when needed, giving his absolute all in the full 90 minutes. And he has so much hunger and passion. It seems like every game he plays isn't meaningless. You know, if he's playing a team that's a little bit lower down in the league, he doesn't just think, oh, it doesn't matter what happens with this one, we'll get an easy win. He is so determined to get a win, and I think that will go down a storm with Real Madrid fans. Now, Haaland usually stays fixed in a central position and acts as an axis from one wing to another. This would allow Real to keep their shape and for Haaland to have more space to receive the ball, and he would also be able to stretch that opposition back line. So when you think about the wingers, the likes of Vasquez, Asensio, Vinicius, he would work really well with these players and, of course, with the support in midfield from the likes of Modric and Cruz. The thing is with Real Madrid, they have the pedigree. They are arguably one of the biggest teams in the world always in the mix for domestic trophies and La Liga. And in the Champions League, let's face it, they are just legendary. So they would be an appealing club for Haaland. Of course, 
There are rumours about financial difficulties with Real Madrid, especially with the coronavirus pandemic as well. However, Real Madrid haven't made a big signing in three transfer windows. So although they do have financial difficulties, they haven't spent a lot of money. So maybe they do have the cash to get Haaland. And at the end of the day, if Florentino Perez has him on his wish list, surely he can pull a few strings. And of course, when it comes to Haaland's wages, if you look at the rumoured wages of the likes of Sergio Ramos, Rafael Varane, Marcelo, Luka Jovic and Gareth Bale, all of these players have been rumoured with departures from the club. So if some of these players do go, they should be able to afford him. And what this means is that Real Madrid can do what they do best and bring arguably the world's greatest player at the moment to the Bernabeu. So those are my teams. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Who could realistically buy Haaland? Check out all the other content that we have got here. And until next time, I will see you all later.